had come to the 11 plus and I was only a year off re uh, finishing school. They took us out of that school and I went to Cranbourne to finish, you know, and then that was it. And when I came out of there, I went to work on a farm. We like everybody did around here. 1953, there was nothing else for me to do. That was all right. I got on very well there and looked after it. Then, of course, all time went on and of course, he said to me, oh, they had to go for to register. And we all hated the thought of that. Nobody wanted to go in the army, make no mistake. He said to me, I can keep you at the army if you want to, John. He said, you work on a farm till you're 26. I said, no way. I said, nobody's going to call me a coward for not going to the bloody army. I said, I want to learn something. You know, wish I would learn it in the army. When I got out of the train up there, you never see nothing like that. But early afternoon, and there was all these buses and lorries, and there was about 300 of us, I think, got off the train. And this little man come up to me, he had a stick under his arm, and he said to me, are you for park hole camp or something? Oh, he said, yeah, I am. Well, get on that summit bus over there, he said. You know, and that was the end of that. That was the end of We went on to the camp then, and we, it, lovely, went in there, bloody hell, fancy cakes, it was lovely. I thought, bugger, this isn't bad. He took us all around into a big shed, and there was blokes behind the desk in there. He went in the door, and the bloke said, what size is your head? Oh, I don't know. So he gave me the thing, it was like a bloody dustbin lid, put that on. He said, that's your heart, he said. You had to shrink them, you know. You go on there, butts, what size are your butts? Oh, nine. That'll do. Trousers, jumpers, and all that. You went on there, you had your case in one hand, you had all this, your tackle in your hand, and you went out the other end. They marched you back into the dark and the night. Pick a bed. So you picked a bed and on the bed with a bit of paper. There he said, take all your civvy stuff off, he said, and wrap it home and send it home to mummy, he said, because you won't want it for two years. I didn't worry, but I was frightened and nervous. I didn't know what was on the other end of the bloody railway line, did I? You know, and I'd never been away from home. And, but I thought, you're going to be there, and then you do, you're going to be there two years. Oh, you heard men crying when I went up there, wanted to go home. You know, but not me. I thought, no, I am not going to be that low. But I thought, well, I'm here. They know more about life than me, the Army do, and they can teach me a lot. Although we was only national service, he was taught how to kill and all that. And we say, I got in a fight. I, only, I was still in basic training. In my word, he was walking about a big man with a bayonet. But yeah, he hit me with a rifle, knocked me on the floor. Oh, stabbed him and my trousers moved over and stabbed me, put me trousers to the floor. He'd have been over a little bit, he'd gone right for me life. When you're in the army, you pick a friend because if you're in trouble, no matter whether you're right or wrong, but he'll stand by your side. You know, it's as simple as that. And you need that because if you don't, you're dead, see.